Hi everyone, today we're going to do a confidence interval where we don't know the population standard deviation. Now in another example, we know the population standard deviation, but we're trying to find out the margin of error um, and to find out the, the actual confidence interval. Now some people might say, is this realistic? Uh, in other words, if we're trying to figure out what the margin of error is, how often do we actually know the population standard deviation? Well, many times we don't. So, assuming that we don't know the population standard deviation, which is a little more realistic, what would we end up doing? Well, recall that we would use our T, not Z, table in order to figure this out. So, let's back up a little bit. Imagine that the average cost for a New York City hotel is $273. And this is based upon a sample of 45 hotels. Now, the question becomes, how accurate is that? That's 45 hotels. But does that reflect every single hotel uh, as far as the mean in downtown New York City? Um, well, maybe, maybe not. So we need a margin of error in order to figure that out. Now, recall that our formula for the margin of error is our sample mean plus or minus t alpha divided by 2. And again, it's t because we don't know the population standard deviation. And then we're multiplying this by our standard error. And notice that our standard error is just s. So the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of um, the sample size. So we know that this is 273 plus or minus. Now what do we do with this t alpha divided by 2? Well, recall that we need to know our degrees of freedom, which is simply n minus 1. So that is 45 minus 1, which is 44. And if you go to a t distribution table, and you're looking in the upper right-hand corner of the bell curve, right up there. Uh, so divided by 2, that's 0.025. And so if you look under the column of 0.025 uh, at a degrees of freedom of 44, you will get a t value of 2.015. So we're taking this 2.015 and we're multiplying that value by our particular standard error, which is going to be our sample standard deviation, $65, divided by the square root of 45. Now, if you do the math on that, you'll get 19.52, or we might just round that up to approximately $20. Now, this is the most important part of statistics. What do we just find? How do we interpret this particular value? Well, here's how we interpret it. What we found is that the sample mean is 273 plus or minus $20 at a 95% confidence level. So another way of interpreting that would be to say we have an interval of 253 all the way up to 293. So while our sample mean is $273, I can be 95% confident that the real hotel cost, the real mean for New York City is somewhere between $253 and $293 at a 95% confidence level. So there is a 5% chance it could be lower or higher than this, but I can be 95% confident that it's within this particular interval. Now suppose um, you really want to figure out this question and that interval is just a little too wide for you. How can you tighten that up a little bit? Increase your sample size, because again, when we're talking about inferential statistics, as we increase our sample size, we're getting closer and closer and closer to that real population. All right, thanks for your attention.